guys, my name is Ella. Welcome to, the to this video on my channel. Today I'd like to tell you a bit more about my library. This is an introductory video. There is going to be a second one. I plan to shoot it sometime, hopefully this week, uh, to show you my actual library, what books I have, how I organize them, and like more of these like details concerning, uh, concerning like my personal library. And this one I thought would be a nice introduction to like what my approach and like what my approach to a personal library is and how I interpret this concept and the last thing is how to <laughs> connect uh, the idea of minimalism and and having quite a lot of books <laughs> um, or more books than average and, and uh, than an average person has um, so basically like the whole my approach to a personal library has been evolving I would say it and it has evolved greatly throughout the years so when i was in my teens i have actually always dreamed of having you know like a wall which would just be bookshelves and i could just store my books there you know so my room would look like a kind of a library <laughs> i always loved libraries so that was my dream i I had bookshelves at home, of course, in my room. I had two, and one of them was uh, had this, these glass doors. And m my preference was actually for the open ones. You know, they are more library type, so they made me feel more like like I was at a library. So I actually wanted to have these open ones, even though uh, I know they are less functional because of the dust and everything and cleaning. But but at the same time, you know, it's just uh, like now i have open bookshelves only so i know they are not that functional but i prefer prefer dusting them every now and then and uh, instead of having like these like ones with glass door or some kind of uh, dust covers so basically um at the time at that time i felt like uh, my personal library is something that's only going to grow you know so that i don't have to buy every book that I read, I don't have to buy every book that I like want to read or intend to read. But at the same time, I felt that, you know, I bought this book for a reason because I was interested in it um, or maybe I liked it and I read it from the library. I borrowed it from the library and read it and then I decided I liked it so much that I wanted to have my own copy. So I felt like, you know, each of these books has a special significance for me and I'm not going to get rid of like almost any of them unless I bought a book that I thought I would enjoy and then I didn't like it so then maybe but otherwise you know I was like no like they can come in but they don't come out <laughs> so by the time I moved out uh, my two bookshelves at, in my room at, at my like family home uh, were actually I wouldn't say pretty crowded I like euphemisms, but they were extremely crowded. They were like, oh. one of them was just so crammed, like every cr nook and cranny, like was like, I crammed books everywhere, like into this bookshelf. So I'm glad it's still alive because it really survived a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but then like, I would say about a year or two years ago, uh, my idea started to change and I also read a book, the bo like two books by Marie Kondo about like, you know, cleaning up and stuff like that. And while I do not agree with some of the concepts and, you know, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a book that changed my life, but somehow it changed my approach to stuff, especially uh, because I felt my mindset has had already shifted a bit. And then, you know, I read this book and it kind of completed, completed this shift in a way. So as I say, like about two years ago, maybe three years ago, I realized that, you know, I grew up in a way, uh, I grew up a while ago, probably because I've been an adult for 10 years now, but yeah, but like, you know, I started feeling that as a person, as a human being, I have been changing and I have changed and I'm changing constantly. And so do my interests, my hobbies, my fascinations, and certain books that were so extremely important for me when I was in my teens do not bear any, like, are not that important for me now. And sometimes I don't even feel the willingness to come back to them. So, like, if they don't bring me joy, <laughs> you know, this concept everyone does by now, I think. Uh, so, like, you know, it's not like I'm going to like enjoy them or take advantage of them or use them or like 
be happy because of them at any point in the future. And maybe if I change my mind in my 60s, I'll be able to buy it again, you know. And, you know, by that time, maybe there will be different editions or stuff like that. So maybe there will be an interesting new edition with lovely um, pictures, for example. And yeah, so it will be a new experience. And, and definitely, you know, just keeping something for the sake of memories is like, you can't keep all the stuff that like brings back good memories. So when I looked at them, I was like, oh yeah, I remember when I was, I don't know, 15 and I was like crazy about this book and I loved this story or I loved this writer and I just bought all the books that he wrote and I just read them all, even though some of them were not as good. <laughs> and and I still loved, loved like his writing. So it brings back memories, but at the same time, you know, it brings back memories when I think about it. I don't have to look at these books to, to remember that. So I decided that, you know, it was time to just decide what, what stays and, and what goes, so to say. So basically now it's more or less the concept that I'm following. A very recent change was that um, because um, when I bought something or I received a book, I usually, you know, it's usually a book that I was somehow interested in and I would like to read at some point in the future. So I really could not imagine, you know, for example, reading a book halfway through and then not enjoying it and then stop and then like give it to the like give it away to the library or, or, or sell it. And I really couldn't see myself doing that. You know, it was like, no, you have to finish it. Or like, for example, um, deciding that, well, I bought this book several years ago and then my interests were very different from like now. And and now I'm not really interested in reading that, that, that book. And it's just, you know, it's just on this shelf and it's making me, I don't know, not frustrated, but feeling like, you know, I have so much to catch up, to catch up on. And I don't really... I'm not really looking forward to it because if there are many interesting books to read, then you are excited. But like here, if you're not so excited, it doesn't really work. It doesn't make you happy. So it was a recent change that I actually, um, when I was giving away books uh, to the library last time, I actually gave away two books that I have, that I didn't actually read. One of them I started reading, but I just, you know, couldn't put up with the like style of writing. So like, I don't know it didn't work for me and and that was a very new thing to me and it was kind of you know like it was really liberating I would say because I felt like okay yeah <laughs> I don't have to look at them anymore and feel like oh I'll have to read it at some point and and now I just so so basically you know to sum up my concept of <laughs> my personal library it, for me even though I'm a bookworm and I love books and I have quite a lot of books not too many I wouldn't say so quite a lot I wouldn't say it's like a lot a lot but like quite a lot um, you'll see in the next video so I would say that my personal library is something that's supposed to bring me joy it also reflects not only what I like reading um, but somehow the concept of me in a way, you know, because these are mostly the books that I am going to read or I intend to read. I have some books that I have read already and that I want to have for some reason. For example, Dickens' novels or Zola's or, you know, like different books like that. So some of the classics, the Donna Tart, for example. No, I'm never giving up these ones, <laughs> at least for now. But I can't imagine myself giving, giving these up or giving them away. Unless, you know, like they don't have them anywhere and I just want to share her work with the world. So, yeah, then I can like share them with other people. But otherwise they are staying right here. <laughs> uh, so there are certain books that are important for me and I really like feel I want to have them and they make me happy. So that's why I have them. But otherwise, I actually have a lot of books that I have not read. So my personal library kind of reflects my interests. Um, and kind of reflects what I'm going to read, I would say, you know. So there is this core that I think is not going to change very much. I might add certain books or, or like uh, some books might disappear as I grow older, but, uh, but generally like all the other books, so this is the core, which is smaller. And then like the bigger, like the majority of the books are actually the ones that I see myself reading, so to say. So, 
I think it's actually very exciting, you know, you look at your shelves and you're like, okay, yeah, what can I read next? So um, it's kind of like in the library, you know, you just browse through the titles and you're like, okay, yeah, I don't feel like reading this type of book. So maybe I'll look for something else. And, and then you're like, oh my God, I've always wanted to read this book. I just, I forgot I wanted to read this book because sometimes it happens. I have a um, to read list or to buy list. Uh, but at the same time, you know, um, you sometimes forget to add books to this list. It's not like I have one list, I have several lists and then it's kind of like you forget about one of them and it's hard, like, I think it's a good idea to have just one <laughs> and I am working on it. I plan to have just one, but so far I have not succeeded in making like a single one list that would have all the titles that I'm looking for. Uh, one more thing that I, I think is important to add here is that when it comes to a personal library, I think that if you have an uh, access to a good library, like an actual library, then you don't really need that much of a personal library. So I really like reading books from library f uh, that I borrow from, from the library. But my problem is that I mostly read books in English, sometimes in French and in Russian. And I live in Poland. And like, if you think about it, I don't know if I read, I don't know, two books in Polish a, ye a year on average. So I don't read a lot in Polish, actually. It's maybe bad because I should, um, but but I don't, I don't. I, I read books in English, basically. So when you think about it, you know, uh, there are uh, like the main library in Poznań actually has quite a good selection of English books. They actually are really pretty good, but you know, you'll find certain types of books there and then others, not at all. So if I want to read the biography of like George Washington, I have to bring it from the US or buy it for a lot of money in Poland um, or from the UK, I guess. But like I actually brought mine from the US. So that's why I also have this need to have an actual like personal library, you know, and to actually have quite like a variety, a variety of books like at my disposal, because it's just like sometimes it's really hard to uh, to find one of these, you know, I have a list and I just look for a book forever and then after three or four years I find it somewhere. Especially that, you know, you work, you earn money and you don't want to spend like all your salary on books. I mean, you could, of course, <laughs> but like you want to save some money. And, and generally I, um, I really like buying uh, secondhand books. Uh, that's one more thing that probably I should mention. So s I don't go to bookstores that often. Uh, firstly, because as I've already mentioned, I don't really read books in Polish, so I'm not really excited about bookstores, um, like Polish bookstores. And then another thing is that books are pretty expensive. So, you know, when I think about it and I know that I can buy, for example, 10 books or eight books at the price of like two new books, um, and I will not have the same pleasure out of it because, you know, like I don't really enjoy reading Polish books as much as I um, enjoy reading books in English, then it doesn't kind of doesn't make sense. You know, I, I, I know that we have to support the, the industry. So definitely I'm uh, like, I support it completely, mm, but I just don't feel like um, there is a place where I could do that in Poland. So if we had like big English bookstores, not like, you know, for example, a Polish bookstore and then like a small selection of English novels, or um, sometimes there are these bookstores which are for language learners and they actually have a lot of uh, materials to, to help you learn a language. And they also usually have a section of English literature, but still it's like a section, it's not an actual bookstore. So, you know, maybe you will find one book that you're interested in, but maybe you'll find nothing and there is not really much to browse through because it's like a shelf or like one small bookshelf. So there is not much to look through, so to say. Um, so I think that's why my approach to like new books, I don't really, that's why I don't buy as many new books as, um, as I buy the secondhand books. So generally my personal library consists mostly of secondhand books. Um, and what I do with them, if I want to, you know, if I read a book and I know I'm never going to read it again. And, um, then even if I really enjoyed the book, but I know it's not something that I want to keep. And uh, then I sometimes happen to, um, I sometimes sell some of them 
but not many of them um, because you know there is not much of a market in Poland for English books to be honest so um, they're actually like there are certain things that just like nobody seems to be interested in I would say and there are certain books that well maybe they are very popular so then usually they are very cheap very cheap when you buy them uh, when you buy buy them as a, like a used book um, so basically I sell but I sell them but like only a few of them and I actually try even if I know I could sell a book I actually try to give them away because I the rest of the books I give up to the library and, and sometimes even if I know I could sell a book I try to give it up to the library especially if I know that you know it's a book that I would like um a library to have so to say so you know if it's just like something to read for pleasure and enjoyment and stuff like that then i think it's not so important but if it's a book that i think is important you know it may change your ma change your view uh, upon a certain subject you know like i read these books about um the american way of poverty and like these social issues i think it's really cool to have these books in the library because like you can't buy them in poland you know maybe you could but you would pay like extremely huge amounts of money because you would have to buy it in the US and then pay for uh, like sending the package for uh, pay for the like the, the fee to to post the package so it's actually extremely expensive and I think that maybe you know somebody will see it find it interesting like the topic interesting and then just read it and if they weren't if the book was not in the library then they would never find it so I feel like it's really cool that by like keeping the books that are the most important for you at this very moment, you can also enrich the, li the collection of the library. Uh, you know, I don't give up books that are, you know, old, used, or I know a li the library has a lot of them. So these books I just um, give away to these places. We have such like outdoor bookshelves where you can just leave books and then, you know, people just like anyone on the street can uh, look through the bookshelf and just have a look whether they want to take any of the books home and then they can after reading they can bring it back so then these ones i leave there but then all the let's say nicer ones the ones that i know the library doesn't have i give away um, and i leave at the library and it's so cool you know <laughs> just one last thing to finish with it's so amazing you know to look at the shelves I have to admit I don't go to the library that often especially since the coronavirus outbreak and you can't really go into the library you can use it but you have to like order the books first you can't like go in and walk along the shelves but it's a really great feeling to walk along the shelves and just see your books because you know it's your books because they weren't there you know I really knew very well what they had in the English section in this main library in Poznań at a certain point when I just really went there frequently and and I really knew which books were mine you know I knew I gave them away and then they suddenly appeared on the shelf so that was really cool that's a really nice feeling you feel like you know your books become part of the like greater collection of the library which which is really I would say a great feeling yeah okay so that's it when it comes to an introduction to the topic of libraries. Tell me what do you think about it? Like what's your approach to your personal library? Library maybe is a is too big a word because we associate it with actual libraries. But I think if an, even if you have a book like a shelf of books, it's your personal library. It's these are the books that reflect somehow who you are, who you want to be maybe, or who like if these books these are the books that you receive from other people and that you don't choose yourself, then maybe it's it reflects how other pe people perceive you or who uh, they want you to be as well. So I think this like uh, you know idea of show me. <laughs> what books you have and I'll tell you who you are it's not exactly true but it definitely te can tell us a lot about ourselves so let me know in the comments like what books you have what appro what approach to your personal libraries you have um, and I'll be happy to hear from you okay bye <laughs>